<laughs> hey, I'm Doug from Jet City. This is Mike from Soldano slash Jet City. And uh, you're watching the YouTube oh, channel of the Code okay. Game. So uh, we're about to do a mod on a Jet City 50 watt here. Yes, we are. Mike is going to do a uh, EL34 output section. Yes, we're going to put EL34 power tubes in this amp. Um, the transformer, the output transformer, is already in this particular amp is already compatible with EL34, so we don't need to do a transformer change at this point in time. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to remove these two. 470 ohm 2 watt resistors and replace them with these very nice ceramic 1k 3 watt resistors and then we're also going to change a resistor in the bias supply to lower the overall bias voltage because EL34s use a lower bias voltage than 5881s or 6L6s. Then we're going to plug in a signal generator, put the amp on a dummy load, and fire it up on the oscilloscope and set the bias. So there you have it. Do you mind if I ask you about tubes really quick? You certainly can. Okay, so this is the 6L6 that's normally in our Yes, flow. that's correct. Okay, and uh, see, okay, can I hold that? Thanks. That is an EL34. That's an EL34. EL34 and here. So what's, here. what's the 34. difference? Well, there's lots of differences actually, but they're way too technical to get into. It, in a, just a mere video, okay. but the, the differences happen inside here, the, inside the structure of the tube. The biggest difference that people need to know is that even though they have the same pin out on the bottom and are totally interchangeable in, in an amp, the EL34 has a significantly different plate impedance than a 6L6 or a 5881. So there's basically two broad groupings of tubes that get used in guitar amps that I've come up with, and that is EL34, 6550, KT88, all have similar, oh, and 60A7, all have similar plate impedance characteristics. Okay. 6L6, 5881, 7027, and uh, KT66 all have similar plate impedance characteristics. So if there's an amp that is optimized for this family of tubes, you cannot simply just plug these in and go, and vice versa. If it's an EL34 or a 6550 or a KT88 amp, you can't just drop in some 6L6s and expect it all to work. The, it'll, it'll function, and it probably won't even hurt anything, but the performance will be substandard. I see. So you have to match the impedance of the tube to the impedance of the output transformer. So What's the character difference? Like so, the, the tone. Well, the up, in, up into clipping, there's no difference whatsoever. It's only when the tubes finally break up that they sound different. The basic difference is EL34s have a mushier sound, and 6L6 slash 5081s, etc., have a tighter sound. Now, in the EL34 family, you've also got the KT88, which, which is, is extremely tight. So. So if you want like a very super tight bottom end and overall solid sound, this tube will deliver in space. Plus, the KT88 can handle more power than a 34. So if you crank the voltage up high enough on the plates, you can basically get about 100 watts out of a pair of KT88s. Oh. You cannot get 100 watts out of a pair of EL34s because gotcha. they can't, they can't dissipate, dissipate enough energy through the plate to do that. Okay, so when you do that mod that mm -hmm. you're going to do here yes. to uh, replace this tube with that tube, yep. can you just run a KT-88? Well, you could, oh. except that our power transformer can't handle the extra current of this tube. That gotcha. So, so that you'd would have be... to put in a new PT. Yes, yes, you would. Right. Um, so, anyway, so, so the sound quality, though, is 
EL 34s are grainier. They, 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 when they do break up, they break up sooner than a 5881 or 6L6. The bass is mushier. They're just not quite as solid. They're a little bit looser sounding. KT60, or excuse me, KT66, 6L6, 5881, 67027, much tighter and more evenly. When they break up, they break up in a more, probably a smoother, smoother way where these will sound a little bit fuzzier and these will sound a little bit broader. Could you say American voice and exactly, British voice? Exactly, exactly. This is your classic Fender Twin sound. This is your classic Marshall sound. Okay. And what do you use in this whole done? 5881s, because I like the solid linearity of the power right. section. So, now we're going to do some solder. Okay, I'll wait for the soldering iron to warm up. What else could we talk about here? How many parts are you going to change on the PCB to enable the output to change? Hopefully only three. We may have to change two different resistors in the bias supply, but generally my experience with Jet Cities has been that I only have to change one of the resistors. So I don't think it'll be a big deal. It's kind of one of those things you have to kind of plug it in and test the voltage and then adjust the resistance value to suit because it's just always a little bit different. And you said that uh, running a KT88 would require a different power transformer? Yeah, well, in our case it would because yeah, they, they draw more current because they're going to be making more power. Uh -huh. So if we... Um... I mean, in this amp we probably could do that because the plate voltage is remains the same, so it's not going to make 100 watts by putting a pair in there. It'll just be still 50 watts with just a different tube. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I meant. So so you could still run a KT88. Oh, you could, yeah, you, but, but you, you could not get 100 you watts You couldn't out ramp it up that No, that's the right. plate voltage I'm, that high. Yeah, I'm, I misunderstood the question, yes. Oh, well, I just probably didn't answer it. I mean, ask it. So, yeah, in order to make... In order to put two KT88s in here and make this a 100 watt amp, we would have to increase the plate voltage and put a higher current capability power transformer. Mm -hmm. and, and at that point, then you would also need a larger output transformer because you need more iron in the transformer to be able to uh, transfer the 100 watts across the transformer core. Okay, so today, you get a JCA50H and it's running 6L6s on the output. Right. If you, when you do this mod that you're doing right now and we drop in the EL34, right. is the output wattage still going to be 50 watts? Yep. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. Okay. So then, after you've done that mod, the guitarist could also drop in a KT88. He could. Without any further modification? Yeah, well, and, a bias change, but... Okay, you, you got to adjust the bias, which yeah. we're not going to teach people how to do. No. And, um, but that's pretty simple. And um, would it still be running 50 watts? Yes, unless we... Yeah, because okay. cause so the plate you, voltage will not, okay. in, will so not enable tube, it to go to the 100 watts. The tube is capable of much more than that. But with within the confines of what we have for a power supply and everything else, it's not going to do it. Okay. So, you know how on your Hot Rod 25, mm -hmm. it, what's the output tube there? 5881. Okay. And you are supplying it with less voltage than it can handle, right? So Yeah, and that's why it's only putting out 25 watts. That same amp, if I just change the voltage on the plates of the power tubes, I, it would put out 50 watts. Gotcha. Because two 5881s will make 50 watts all if day If you were using a different transformer. So. Yes, exactly. So, in theory, is that the same thing as running a KT88 in this amp? Would you get that same sort of feel from the amp? Because you're the squashiness. Yeah, because yeah, you're, to you're it, not putting in as much voltage into the tube as. Yeah, to an extent, except that the KT88 doesn't have that same 
when it's running at low voltage, it doesn't have that same characteristic that a 6L6 or an EL34 has running at lower voltage. Gotcha. So in other words, it would it would be a little bit squashy, but due to its in, the inherent nature of the tube of, of not a being a tube. yeah, it's a tight tube regardless. So it's going to not give you that much of that effect. Not what you would expect anyway. Did I already ask you how many parts you're going to change? Yeah. And I said possibly only three. Gotcha. Maybe four. Gotcha. It depends on what we end up with by what the bias voltage ends up being. Okay, so we've got our new cathode or excuse me, cathode screen resistors in. And that was fast. Yeah. Well, I probably would have done a neater job of soldering those. Oh, yeah, probably. Sure. Of course you would. Okay, so now... <laughs> um, you won't like the Soldano when he's angry. In your dreams, you would... <laughs> <laughs> You'll be dreaming of that. So I'm going to fire this up now without changing anything and just see what the range of voltage is, and then I will change resistors accordingly. Great. I'm switching it off. Okay, so now we're going to just check, check, test the bias on this thing. So we're going to first hook up the AC. Is that really necessary? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Turn on our fancy... Usually I, I set the bias, I don't have the amp plugged in or turned on because it's a lot safer. Yeah, well it is a lot Yeah, you're right. Doug, you're on to something Because you're always saying there are high voltages present. There are. Um, so now, I just avoid those by This not. is a problem. Oh, sorry. Okay, we're going to fix that later. But okay. You don't like the way those cables are wrapped, though? No, because this jack will eventually just chew it. They got so tight. In fact, well, okay, we'll go back. Get to it later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've got those things clamped so tight that this, the six, every time you plug in 16 of jacks, it's going to cut right to that wire eventually. Okay, so we we put it we put the speaker is connect or the spe the amp is connected to a 16 ohm dummy load and it's hooked to power. We put a foot switch in so that it's going to be in the normal channel. We're then going to take a signal here, which is a 1,000 hertz signal. You know, 1,000 hertz. There's a much more than 999 hertz, right? Something like that. Boy, I'm just a terrible side man. You just remember, I'm the side man. Okay. No, you're the you're the. I'm supposed to be the side man. You're the Soldano. So okay, and now we're gonna check some voltages here with our nice digital multimeter from the 1970s or whatever things made. Digital wasn't even invented in the 70s. Yeah, it was. Yeah, this is probably a very early version. Meaning it's... Oh, no, you said virgin. Ver version? Version. Okay. Version. Okay, so what's our bias voltage now? It's 63 volts, which is the correct voltage for a 6L6. It's so what's our range? Can we get down to what we need? Yeah, see, now our lowest voltage here is only 30, is 34 volts, which might actually bias properly for an EL34, so we might just get away with not having to change anything there. We'll only know that by firing up the amp and looking at the waveform. So, with everything down, okay. Helps me turn on the scope. Why did you just rotate the bias pot again? After because I want to start with the voltage way too high and then bring it down rather than the other way around because that puts it doesn't heat the tube as much. So it makes the tube cooler. So see, oh yeah, here's a perfect way I can show it in fact. Okay, so this, this is what the amp looks like. Putting out, oops, this is this is oh, probably, okay, there we go. 
this is the waveform of the output. This is at 50 watts. And when it flattens out, that's what the amp looks like when the power tubes are actually clipping and distorting. So up to up to the point to where that goes flat, the tube is making this is what you'd call no distortion. So that's undistorted. But see this? That's zero crossing distortion, and that's why we set the bias to get rid of that. So by and again, there's very high voltages here. You got to be very careful where you put your fingers. And that's why I don't recommend anybody doing this at home. Okay, so now, just notice how we've almost gotten rid of that little jag in there. Yep. Turn it further. Oh, I didn't have to change this resistor. I'm not getting quite much range. Oh, right there. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there's a perfect sine wave right there. And that's what you're looking for. Now, once I have a perfect wave, what I do then is I increase the bias voltage just slightly until I just start seeing the beginnings of a, of a cross at zero crossing. And that's where I leave it, because that gives you better tube life without sacrificing any tone. And how many watts are you getting out of it? At? I'm getting a full 50 watts right here. So what, that's, what that looks like in AC voltage is... So you've got the master output all the way up. Yeah, and I'm using this as preamp. So. So we're getting RMS voltage of 29.8, which would be the same as taking 40 and going 40 times 0 0.707 would give you RMS, so which would be about 29.9 volts. So if we take that and we square that, that is, uh, well, it's almost 30 volts now. So at 30, square 30, it's 900. Divide that by 16. 16 goes into 900. Uh, okay, so. So our formula for power going by Ohm's law is E squared over over R. So basically an E is our electromotive force, i.e. voltage, RMS voltage. So once again we have 20 29.8 volts. So we square that. 29.8 times 29.8 equals 888.04 and now we just divide that by R which is our resistive load which in this case is 16 ohms divided by 16 and we get 55 watts so okay. actually yeah we're putting out over over 50 watts there and it's probably you know I might have this slightly in the distortion do you think that I should change the model number of this amp to JCA 55H sure. instead of 58 why not Doug? that would be a great that would be the I like the way you say that my be... name there because I can tell that means you're hurt that would like, be the smart that would be the smartest thing we could do with our capital at this point in time <laughs> is, is, is redesign the artwork sure I'm all over it <laughs> it's a wonderful idea I think it's great you said it's a great idea <laughs> Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Just oh, really? Because I was serious. Yeah, but there it is. That's that's your classic, that's your textbook sine wave right there. Cool. Yeah. Done? Done. Thanks, buddy. Power this baby down.